Aleichem to everybody. I want to say uh, uh, um, a good a good winter. Uh, uh, that's what the Olam says here in our psalm, which means a good winter. And I always say over the Vart that Rav Hutner Zatzal used to say over, they say, say a gesunte winter, it should be a gesunte winter, a gesunte winter. Rav Hutner said, you shouldn't say a gesunte winter because a gesunte winter means it's going to be a really strong winter. The winter is going to be really strong. You should say, Rav Hutner used to say these quips, you should say a winter mit gesund. The winter should be gesund with gesund. We should all be healthy. Especially, you know, for those of us that uh, are not so young, so we have to be, be very careful. I myself took not only, you know, we all took the vaccinations here in Eretzvall, not everybody, but I'm from those that believes in the vaccinations. We took already a third the booster. But this week I went and I took the vaccination for the flu, which I take every year. And uh, they say that it could be the flu this year is going to be a lot stronger. It's a, it's a very interesting phenomena that they say that the, <laughs> that the, 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 um, the flu during corona was very, very small. There was nothing happening. Kamat nothing happening with the flu. So it's like so clear that the Rebunners have decided, okay, you know what? I'm, you know, I'm going to give you something else to have to worry about. So I'm going to hold back. I'm going to take away the flu. The flu is not going to be so difficult. But now that the Rebunnishim is, you know, he brought into the world, we, we believe the Rebunnishim does everything. And the Rebunnishim allowed that the scientists should be able to come up with the, with the vaccinations. And uh, now the corona, at least here in Eretz Yisrael, we see that the numbers are going down. We're davening, there's still, any, any person that gets sick, it's still a big, a big, big danger. And people should, as far as I'm concerned, you know, I'm not here to propagate anything, I'm not a doctor, I'm not a lawyer, I'm not anything, but saying, but, but Reb, Chaim, Reb Chaim says everyone should take the vaccination. Reb Chaim says everyone take it. So, Lamaisa, if we have the vaccine and we take it, we do our shtadlis, and for sure we dive into Reb Shalom, that he should watch over us, and Reb Shalom should give us a good winter, a winter mit gesund, that's what it should be. Um, the topic that I wanted to speak about was, you know, uh, stories from Gedolim of yesteryear. And, uh, but I gave a shmooth thing to Shiva, so we'll start off a little bit with the, um, with some of the thoughts that I had this morning, and I'll share it with you. Uh, one of the things I said to the Talmudim in the Yeshiva, Baruch Hashem, is great. We had a, the first week of Yeshiva, and uh, I was just mentioning to Yisrael that Yisrael Yitkowski, that uh, we have new boys that came. It's always great to see young, new, fresh blood that comes into the yeshiva and uh, and there's a vibrancy and there's a there's like a connection that goes on and one of the things I spoke about was that that the walls of the base medrash uh, are saturated with the with the with the, the voices and the koilas of of all the learning all the davening that goes on and sometimes you know, like a lot of young people that don't really appreciate really what's happening, you know, they come into yeshiva, or not only to go to yeshiva, you know, a person that goes to shul, and goes to daven, goes to a daf yom yishir, have a chavrusa, you don't realize what, what, you're, what, you're, what you're bringing is, you're, bringing, you're saturating the world with kedusha, and it's a tremendous, tremendous uh, accolade for the Jewish people. I just heard from a, a small little snippet from Rabbi Moshe Hillel Hirsch, should be Gazut and Stark, Rashiva Slabot, going to the great Gadolim in Eretz And he was saying that uh, one of the problems with today's youth is that they don't really realize the, the Mila of what it is to be a Yid, to be a Jew, just to be a Jew. You know, the concept of Asher Bochabon, Mikolam, Venosa, Lanos, Terosa, that we are different. When we say we're different, for sure, it means we have greater responsibilities, but the Rabbanu Shem chose us from all the nations of the world. And and when a when a person is able to use his Judaism for what it's really for, then he becomes he creates a whole different aura, creates a whole different atmosphere. And and I, I mentioned that uh, I got a phone call on Arab Shabbos from a good friend of mine, Rabbi Yisrael Katzenstein, who was a mashgiach in there Yaakov for many years, and he said to me, hey, Rabbi Yisrael, I got to tell you, I had a great experience today. In he lives in Ramat Shlomo, which is one of the neighborhoods here in Yerushalayim. And they brought this week, or they made a dedication this week, 
of the caravan that Rav Yashiv Zatzal used to daven in right next to his house. And they moved it intact from right next to his house in Meir because the people that owned the area, they want, they want to build on it already. And one of the things that was decided by the area was that, no, that the caravan is going to be used as a shul. And they were able to pick it up completely and they were able to bring it over to Ramat Shlomo and had a, a dedication, Chandukas Abayis, and Big Rabbanim came and spoke. And... Uh, and I just mentioned, I said, there's no question. Ah, so Rabbi Kathian called to say that, you know, Rav Moshe Yashiv, that's Rav Yashiv's son, he came and he was one of the people that was there. And who was his driver? His driver was our good Talmud, Rabbi Yamin Krishna, who's very, very close to him. And Rabbi Yamin, who we know is very close to Rav Chaim, Kanievsky, Shlita, Shabit Gesut and Stark. So Rabbi Saul Kathian was saying, that he remembers Rabbi Yamin from way back when, when he came to Ner Yaakov, and now, Bar Hashem, look what he's become. But I, the most important thing I want to bring out is that there's no question that the, the caravan of Yashiv is saturated with all of those shiurim and all of those davenings. Rav Yashiv would get there at 6 o'clock in the morning you know, for davening, and then he would give the shiur at night. And uh, many shaylas were asked, and many brisim were there. I myself was Oichadev, brisim of Talmidim, and 8 o'clock by Rav Yashiv in that caravan. I was able to get brachas by Rav Yashiv in that caravan. I think about all the thousands and thousands of people that would came over the years and the Torah, the Torah the Rabbi said all of these things they make an impact make an impact and uh, I said over that that the Chazanish was once walking with a few Talmud Chachamim in Bnei Brak and the Chazanish exclaimed says, "Oh, over here a few Bachram, Yeshiva Bachram were talking and learning yeah, the Chazanish was able to discern with his great Kayach of Ruach HaKadosh, or however you want to describe it, he knew that in this area there was Torah learning that was going on. And when, he, when we say that the Chazanish said that there were Bachan that were sitting and learning, talking and learning, I explained it must have been that they were talking and learning really the way you're supposed to be talking and learning. And they probably either sang something which was really Divrei Emes or Karav Lemes, that's Lafia Nis Daiti. That's what the Chazanish, the Chazanish remarked. So we speak about the beginning of Zman, we speak about the beginning of a, of a, of a new year. You know, we've had a little break, but it's the it's beginning of the year. When I say the beginning of the year, you know, we went through Yom Narayim, Rishana, Yom Kippur, Sukkot. We already started off, we're already holding the third parasha in the Torah, with the Breshis, with Nayak, now holding Lech Lecha. It's all the beginning of the year, beginning of a new Zman. And... Uh, we see the new year, especially here in Eretz Yisrael, Shemitah, Shviyas, ah, Gavaldik, Gavaldik, and Yonim. I went with the Rebetzin. We went for Shabbos. We went away for a little break. The Rebetzin had been working very, very hard for the last two months. She not only with the family, but also cooking for the yeshiva. And I said, I have to take her away. And we went to Kibbutz Chafetz Chaim for Shabbos to the hotel that they have there. And when we got there, Namish the fields, it's unbelievable, Kiddush Hashem. Namish the fields are all fallow. Nothing is growing. Their mom is, you know, they're keeping the halachas the way you're supposed to keep the halachas. And uh, you pass by different places. And you can see one place is, there's nothing being planted. And the other side of the tracks, unfortunately, the people that hold the hetem achira, whatever they hold of, and, uh, and they do plant. But there's so many and so many thousands and thousands of dunim of land that this year are resting. Shabbos, ah, Whole year, whole year is going to be resting. So we have to be, uh, to recognize it's all Gavaldi, Gavaldi, Gavaldi. One of the things I said over today was we see in this week's parasha that Avram Avinu is, uh, he hears that his, his son, his son in law Lot, his, his nephew Lot, son in law, his nephew Lot was captured by the kings and he runs after in order to save him, even though they had had a split. Because there was a riv, but they had a split. They had a, they split up, but still, he runs after him. And I, uh, that there's one insight that we had mentioned last year. We just mentioned again this year. Could be we'll mention it tomorrow in the in the Chumash year. That uh, we see that that the blood relatives are something which are very very important in Judaism. Mipsar al tisalim, and Avraham Avinu, even though Lot went to, to Stom and he wasn't really acting the way, the way a person should act 
and uh, but still, in the end of the day, he was his blood. He was his relative, and he runs after him, and he tries to save him, and he does save him, and he does save him. At the end of the day, he saves Lot, and from that saving, that salvation, we know that a lot of great things came out because from the Lamaisa from Light, in the end of the day, comes out Melech Hamashiach, comes Dovid Melech. You have to understand how that works, but that's a separate shmuz. But um, it says that what did he do? Vayishma Avram Kinish Ba'achiv. I mean, I heard that his brother was his, his brother. He calls him his brother. Nephew was called like his brother. He was captured. Vayorek. He was kidnapped. Vayorek es Chanichov. He took his Chanichov. Yelide Beisai. Shmaina Asa Vesholosh Meiros. Took three hundred and eighteen of members of his household. Vayirdaf Adon and ran after Don. And Rashi Kodesh brings down, who was this? It wasn't really 318. It was Eliezer, right? The Gematria 318, that he was, and he's called, Vayork is Chanichov. Chanichov, Chanich means like a student. And Rashi says, Eliezer, was, he was Machanachim in mitzvahs. And Rashi explains what the concept of Chinuch. Chinuch is the first item that you do, Haschol is Kinesis Adam. When a person is creating a vessel, that's called chinuch of the vessel. Chinuch of the house. Chinuch of, of chanichim, of, of, of chanoich lenar. Where we're supposed to teach chanukah samizbeach, chanukah sabayas, chanukah, chanuch hafei. So Revolvi, we mentioned, said over Gaval de Gazach. He says, we know the Gemara tells us that when a child begins to speak, so the father is supposed to teach him Lashon HaKodesh, to speak, to speak in the holy language, and he teaches him Torah. He's three years old. You know, I went to my son today, my Doveberry after, after, after first Seder, and uh, his youngest son, Yaakov, comes running to me. He's got long hair. Mitz Hashem will have a Chalaka uh, soon, a, Mitz uh, and he's mouthing words. He's mouthing, beginning to talk. He's beginning to talk. What happens when a, a Jewish child is beginning to talk? What do we have to do? We have to teach him. What's, what's the big deal? Let's wait a little bit. So we won't teach him. You know, we'll teach him some sports. We'll teach him some, sports, we'll teach him some uh, you know, some good things to, to play around with. No. What happens in the beginning determines how a person is going to, to grow and what direction he's going to go in. And uh, he says the beginning of a year, the beginning of a year is the way it's supposed to be. Rosh Hashanah, we act the way we're supposed to. Tishrei, Yom Kippur. Now we get, that means we're going to have a good year. Beginning of a month, Rosh Chodesh. We bench Rosh Chodesh, beginning of a day. If the beginning is good, if the, day is, if the beginning of the day is good, it's going to be a good day. What's the beginning of a day for, for a Yid? Davening, tefillah. And we spoke this morning that, um, that we have to realize how important tefillah is because if, if we have our first expression in the morning will be our connection to HaKadosh Baruch then our whole entire day is going to be a day that's filled with good things. The, 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 he brings down that there were great gedolim they were mocked when they started saying Baruch Shomar, which is the beginning of Pesukah Zimra, they were special, have special kavana just for Baruch Shomar. Because if you have kavana for the Baruch Shomar, you'll have kavana for the rest of the tefillah. In the beginning of Shemun Esrei, Maginavis, if you have kavana for the first bracha, that will help you to have bracha for the rest. Chinuch. This is really what it's all about. How are we going to be mechanech? So I explain, explain to the Talmudim today, and I'll give it over to everybody, that that's really what, what, what it's all about. A yid lives a life, we want to be mechanech, mechanech our children, mechanech ourselves, mechanech our surroundings, mechanech our houses, our houses, our houses, our houses, filled with svarim, filled with shiurim, filled with mitzvahs. A person gets married, beginning the first, the first year, also it's called chinuch, chinuch, and, 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 and how we start that first year, like I always used to mention to the guys in there, Yaakov, you know, even if the guy's not necessarily going to stay in learning for the rest of his life, but if he could somehow work out that he could spend a year learning, one well, of the first year of his life, to, 
to be a kavul guy, you know, to learn, to learn. If you can work it out, you know, that's it. So yeah, Baruch Hashem, today you have a lot of girls that they want to have boys that sit and learn. If you can get a, you get a, such a girl, and you could, uh, not everyone gets an opportunity, but if you're able to do it the first year, ah, what a chinuch chinuch for life. And um, I thought this is a great lesson. This is a great lesson. One of the things we spoke about was that, um, you know, so, uh, it started out like this. I saw a little interview with uh, Rabbi Aaron Cutler. Rabbi Aaron Cutler is the CEO of Lakewood, New Jersey, of B- BMG. And it seems right now he's about to retire from his position as being the CEO. He's been the CEO for 27 years there. He is the brother of Reb Malkiel, who's one of the Rashivas and all of his brother-in-laws. He himself is known to be like a very uh, innovative person in the Torah world, running BMG, and there hasn't been a month that they haven't paid the salaries and they haven't taken care of their bills, and Lakewood is literally either the largest yeshiva or one of the largest yeshivas in the world together with the Mir and Eretz Yisrael. And he has a very good, he has a business savvy and he's got a business plan. He's got a business plan. And uh, they interviewed him and they asked him some poignant questions and everything else. And he's very, very, he's, he's, um, he's able to explain things and able to put things in the proper perspective. And they said to him, what would... His grandfather, Rabbi Aaron, he's named after Rabbi Aaron. What did Rabbi Aaron say about the Lakewood of today? You know, if you go to Lakewood today, it's a, it's, it's a city. It's like thousands and thousands of you. And then there are businessmen and there are people that are in commerce. It's not just, you know, 25 Kola guys sitting and learning. There's a lot of guys sitting and learning. But Lamaisa, there's a lot of guys that are working, going to business. They have Kola Bokers. There's a tremendous amount of Torah that's pounding in different ways, a lot of chesed. A lot of people now today, Rosh Hashivas, they go, they go to Lakewood to go raise money. Because a lot of very, very chashva balabatim there who learned in yeshivas, but they know how to, and they, and they understand the importance of Torah. So he said, what, was, what does his grandfather say about today's world? You know, they, they have seasons, they have all the latest foods over there, you know. So he spoke about the luxuries of America. He says, yes, we're the world, of, no question, we have a lot of plenty over here. And that's our plus and that's our minus. There hasn't been a generation like this that has had so much. And that's something we have to understand what the HaKadosh Baruch has given it to, to, to America. And at the same time, we have to be careful about it. But at the same time, we have, the main thing, most important thing is trying to say that, you know, Rabbi Aaron would be very, very happy with what he saw. He would be very, very happy because he, would, he, he had a vision of creating something in America, which would be like in Europe, which meant that Torah is the most important thing in the world. You know, I was reading a biography about a certain Godel that lived in America way before a Baron, way before even Rav Moshe Feinstein. In the earlier years, Josh, you have to hear this. He was a Rav in Elizabeth, New Jersey. His name was Yosef Kanovich. He was in Elizabeth, and then eventually became the chief rabbi of Newark. He was in Trenton. He, he helped to develop the day school before Rabbi Tites. And he was really a phenomenal, he was, he was an unbelievable Tom, he, I was reading about a very fascinating story about a Talmud Chacham who learned in Slabotka by the altar in the early, early years. He was a Chavrusa with her blaze Yehuda Finkel, the son of the altar of Slabotka. He was the son-in-law of the Radvaz. The Radvaz was the Rav in Tzfas, was one of the biggest G'dayim. And he was the son of law. He ended up, he moved to, he moved to Tzfas and then eventually he had to go to America to raise money for the yeshiva. And we long, make a long story short, ended up staying in America, bringing his family over, and he became a very, very chasharov. And he was a very, he was a tremendous orator. He would speak, you hear this, Josh, on Shabbos in either Elizabeth or Newark. Newark had, at one time, 90,000 Jews living in Newark. And they had a lot, a lot of shuls. And they had schlachtos, and they had, you know, they had slaughterhouses, and they had a lot of different things that were going on there. And he, he was one of the first people to really put an impact into the kashrus. Kashrus was a very big issue because there were a lot of people, you know, shaykhtim, and there was businesses, there was the mafia involved, a lot of different things were going on, and the kashrus wasn't that great. And he was able to somehow structure things, and he had a lot of enemies because of that, but he was able to put things into place. And he was a big supporter of, even though he was a big Talmud Chacham, he wrote tshuvas 
that Reb Chaim Eiser uh, gave approbations for. Okay, but he was a big believer in 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 in, in creating Eretz Yisrael. I would call him today what you would be called Mizrahi, Mizrahi. But he was friendly with all of the Gedolim, Rav Henkin and Reb, and uh, Blazer Silver. And the most important thing I want to bring out is like this, that he was living in a time when today we have in America, we have Baruch Hashem, a school system, a yeshiva system. Everyone sees you have a, you have a kashra system. He was prehistoric. He was before things were even happening. He was the one that was helping to create it. He created that dynamics, the chinuch. What we see today was really a lot of it's the outcome of these great rabbis that they were the first pioneers, the pioneers of Torah in America at a time when there was no Lakewood, there was no, uh, there was no yeshivas that were going on, and he was doing his utmost to, to try to set up that there shouldn't just be an hour a week and a person should get a little lesson from a rabbi, get a bar mitzvah lesson. Ah, the haschalas rabbi said, haschalas. So what, what I wanted to say is like this, that... Um, that the Abbevisa uh, Mipsar Khaltasalim. You shouldn't forget about your you shouldn't forget about your children. You shouldn't forget about your children. But you have to know that every generation has his way, its way of Khinuch. So there's a story I said over today that the uh, Rabbi Leib Steinemann, there was a certain Kolo guy, his son, a good Yeshiva boy, a young Yeshiva boy, he was learning Yeshivas, and the, the boy Bain Hastarim finished a Masechta, like a, a large Masechta. And he, his father knew about it. His father wanted to make a little hype about it, so he decided to make a big seum. And he got a lot of his friends together, and he made a nice nice meal for him. And, and then afterwards, he decided to take him for a bracha to Reb Aaron Leib. So he comes to Reb Aaron Leib, and he tells us, Reb Aaron Leib, you know, his son made a seum and a Masechta, and he went to Bain, Has, Bain, Has, Bain, Has, Bain, Has, Bain Has Ram Leib was very ecstatic. Wow. Not just what you learned in the yeshiva, but you spent extra time to learn. And then he said to him, he said, uh, can I ask you some kashas? You know, if I would be like, I would say, no, please don't ask me any kashas. Yeah. And he said to him, um, yeah. And Ram Leib started asking this young boy questions, and the boy really knew. He learned to Masechta well. He knew it. Ram Leib was so happy. Ram Leib says, I want to ask you something. Did you tell your grandfather about it? He says, for sure, I told my grandfather about it. What did your grandfather give you for a present? So the boy said, like, in a natural, he didn't say it in a complaining way. He said, he gave me a, a, two bars of chocolate. <laughs> two bars of chocolate. So Rabbi Leib laughed. He says, oh, your grandfather's, he's living 200 years ago. 200 years ago, what you gave to a boy that finished the Masechta, you gave him a bar of chocolate. He says, today, that's not, that's not what we got to do. And he went into his drawer, and he pulled out a $100 bill. And he says, I want you to have this. I want you to have this. I want to give you this to show how amarich, how I appreciate what you did. Rabbi Aaron Leib said, today, <laughs> you got to give cash. <laughs> you have to know today. You have to know what's going on in today's world. Another great rabbi, Rabbi Aaron Leib Ganachovsky, was a... Um, a great Rosh Hashiva of the Chabini Yeshiva here in Yerushalayim, and uh, a great, great person. So they had a minig that by the Chabina Rav, Chabina Rav, Deiber Weinfeld, was a Weisenfeld, was a great god in Eretz Yisrael. He went to got through the Holocaust, and uh, I mentioned some stories about him. He's really a tremendous, tremendous person. So the, so the Chabina, on his yard site, the Anaminig in the yeshiva, that they would ask one of the Bachrim to learn one of the, the Shtiklach Torah from his Sefer and say it over for the yeshiva. And they would pick a good boy. And, um, and, and that's what happened. So he picked a certain Bachrim. He said, I want you to prepare a Shtikl. And then a couple of days later, he went up to the Bachrim. He says, I want to hear what you said. And he helped him to make sure that he had it really well. And it's going to be like two days from now, and he's going to make a big thing, and they make, and the whole yeshiva would come, and 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 his parents are going to come, and then the morning of the siyum, Rav Ganachovsky, the Rosh Hashiva, tremendous tamachacham, big masbid, goes to the office and he says, "I want you to make sure that there's a tzalam, there's a photographer that's going to come to take pictures of what's happening today, not for a brochure for the yeshiva. I want that the boy should have a maskeret, something to remember." 
and that his parents should be able to see what kind of how were mechaber the Torah that ah the kachava I said that salam came and they had the whole he gave the shear and there was a whole suda they were singing and the reshiva spoke and then the suda ended and the thing ended and then a few days later Rebaran Kanachovsky Avram Kanachovsky goes to the office where are the pictures they they finally get the salam they brought the pictures he looks at the pictures and he says hey he missed out. What did he miss out? He said, he took pictures of Stam, you know, the food, the Michael, the singing, but he didn't take a picture when he was saying the Shtikl Torah in front of the Rosh Hashivas and sitting next to the Rosh Hashivas. So he went and he called the Baruch. He says, listen, I want you to come to my office, Ben Asdarim, and the Mashkiach is going to come, and you're going to stand up, and we're going to have the photographer come, and he's going to take a picture. He's going to take a picture of you. I want you to be able to have it. I want your parents to be able to have it. This is a gadol today recognizes today's generation. We need different types of of tamritzim, as we called, different types of 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 avenues. How we're going to get the the world to have the right chinuch. We can't live the way we're not living in the way they lived in. The, we're living in our generation today. We have to know what's going to work for us. You know, I don't, I don't know what, what the tabritz is today. You know what I mean? Do you, do you give each person a, uh, a kosher phone? I don't know. <laughs> but we have to be mechabed. We have to be mechabed. I had a, a, a there was a, a, I spoke to a certain bacher in the yeshiva, a very, very wonderful, wonderful bacher, and I asked him what he did bein azvanim, and I got to tell you, I was blown away. I didn't want to say how much he learned. <laughs> he, he learned a tremendous amount of Venus. He's a really a unique boy, unique boy. And I asked him, so I asked him this question. I said, no, did your grandfather get, did you tell your grandfather about it? No, his grandfather's not, not such a chash, not so, I said, you should tell your grandfather, tell your grandfather, Rabbi Liv said he should give you at least $100, at least $100. When I was bar mitzvah, I remember I went to the Rosh Hashiva, Rav Rudiman Zechazanik Levracha, who was my father's Rebbe. And when I came into the Rosh Hashiva, the Rebbetzin was there. Rebbetzin Rudiman, she herself was a great, great person. And she said to the Rosh Hashiva, in Yiddish, she said, tell, tell Yeshua about his father. She wanted that, Rosh, my, my, Rosh, my father was one of the prime Talmudim of Rav Rudiman. And he wanted that he should... Um, he should speak a little bit about some of the accomplishments that my father had that I and myself should be able to have the proper role model to be able to, um, to, be able to um, get the, a proper perspective. So the Rashiva Rav Rudiman told me that my father, when he was 15 years old, he went into the base manager on Erev Shabbos and he learned Masech to Beitzah and he started learning on Erev Shabbos and he didn't leave the base menders for 24 hours. He in there, he had meals brought to him by his friends. He stayed in the base menders from Erev Shabbos throughout the entire night. He stayed in the base menders, he had meals in the base menders. Then he continued. And by the end of Shabbos, he finished the entire Masech de Beitza. We just finished now Beitza in the Daf HaYomi. And, uh, and I say this over, and Rav Rudiman told me that, he said, you should know that I thought that he was learning it, I thought he was learning it like, you know, he was just reading it. But after Shabbos, I called him over, because I had saw, I'd seen in the beginning, he was holding on Dav Dalid, and then later on I saw he was holding on Dav Tezvav, and then later on I saw he was holding Dav Lamed Beis, and then by the end of Shabbos, he was already holding Dav Mem, which is the end of the Masechta. And I called him into my office, and I gave him a bechin, I asked him, all of Tysus' caches. And my father was able to give all the terutzim of this, um, of Tysus. I mean, my father really had a phenomenal, phenomenal uh, understanding of the Mesechta. I myself am made, many, many years later, I said a certain Chabura on the Nyanim from Gram Kibui, and I told it over to my father, and immediately I knew I was using a Tysus in Masech the Beitzah with my father immediately said, ah, oh, you mean the Tais in Beitzah and you mean the Russian in Beitzah and he already put the, ready, the whole Shtikl Torah 
He retained it. He retained it. My father had the ability to retain things. But the most important thing is that the Rashifa said to me, because your father from himself, your father, that, that, that's, that, that's a role model. And then he wrote me a check in those days for me. He wrote me a check for Bar Mitzvah, a $100 check, which for me was like, wow. And Ravudman, why was he giving me $100? It wasn't, Ravudman, it wasn't an agvir, but he, he was giving the $100 because he wanted to show that chashivas, chashivas of a, of a, a bocher Bar Mitzvah, his father was, had learned through him, not only learned through one Mesach, that finished us and everything else, we have to try to look for Eitzes. How can we get, I don't know, today, Bor Hashem, the Daf HaYomi is Bor Hashem, it's Ibra Al, so many people learning it. Uh, I've mentioned it before, Rabbi Stefanski from, from Beit Shemesh, MDY, they have great, great things that are going on. You have people learning Ibi'i and doing Chazoras. Rabbi said, for ourselves, ourselves, we have to be machshiv, to give chashivas, to give chashivas, to be mechanach ourselves. And I think that this, these lessons of the gedolim, of um, how they, you know, how they went through life and how we can continue your life. And now we're holding, two thousand and twenty-one, right? Two thousand and twenty-one, holding by the almost by the end of two thousand and twenty-one, uh, and we're holding at the point where we hope that the COVID is now waning and that uh, not only here in Eretz Yisrael but throughout the world, people should get better and people shouldn't be sick. The Rebbeinu is sending all kinds of messages. He sent us all kinds of messages. And we've maintained ourselves. The yeshivas, Baruch Hashem, have stood, stood strong. The shuls, the bat the but the midrashas, with all of the difficulties. And now we're beginning the beginning of the new winter's man, the chinuch. And I think that if we try to look for ourselves, what can I do? I said over that, you know, certain things that I was makabal myself, from Yom and Arayan, to be able to keep... Um, and I'm trying my utmost to keep to whatever degree I can keep to learn additional things that I took on for myself, additional kavanas that I took upon myself. Speaking about myself, not that I want to brag about anything. I'm not doing any great things. But any type of kabbalah you might have taken upon yourself. Now's the time to be mechazikit. A lot of times what happens is, you know, the year starts, you do it a few times, and then boom, 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 things come up. Now's the time to reestablish, re mechazik yourself. Be mechanech ourselves again and recognize that uh, there's no one like us. And when we hear about these great gedolim, behind you see some of the pictures of the great rabbis. I did want to mention that I hope that we'll be able to have a, a Zoom, as I mentioned to Yisrael, a topic that we want to try to speak about. I want to speak about gedolim and sports. We want to speak a little bit about one of our upcoming Zoom shmuzes. We're going to speak a little bit about how, especially for Americans, how sports has played a big role, and an outlook of Gedolim's outlook on sports. That's going to be an interesting topic that hopefully we'll come up with. Wishing everyone wonderful, wonderful Yashikov. Good to be back with everybody. Mitzvah Shev next week. We hope we'll keep it this time of 1 o'clock. Wishing everyone a wonderful Shabbos. Have a good day. Thank you very much for listening. We want to thank jfoundations.com. If you could sponsor any of our activities, it would be another way of addressing and being able to give over Torah to other people. Go on the website and show your support. Thank you very much for joining us.